What's up, everybody? It is the final day near Comic Con. We are we are just wrapping up. I am here with Ram B, as you guys know, has been on the show, uh, writer of things like The Many Deaths of Lila Star, Aquaman Andromeda, Radio Apocalypse, Detective Comics, The Swamp Thing, uh, Carnage, Venom. Where do you find the time? Uh, I don't sleep. Do you sleep is the next question. Okay, okay perfect. Good. That's it. That's it. We Leading question. Two questions with one answer. That's it. Amazing. Um, and one of the things that I like to do is I, I, I appreciate your writing because of, for me, it's, it's technical. The, the way that you build out scripts and the way that you build out comics. Um, how do you transition mindsets from such a variety of different kinds of genres, from a variety of different kinds of narratives? How do you, how do you switch the way you're thinking about each book and then get into those? Um, I, mean, I tend to think of story and genre in separate ways. Okay. So you figure out why a story works and that stays true almost as a philosophy throughout your, your mm. endeavor. And okay. then when you get to a genre, you understand the mechanisms, the structures of that genre. So your work really is just to make the underlying philosophical story work with those mechanisms. So it's almost like, it's almost like trying to put two pieces of a puzzle together. Yeah, so yeah. Um, maybe that's too, I don't know. Maybe that's too mechanical. Dan Waters no, tells me. I love it. I love it. Dan, Dan Waters tells me I construct story like an engineer. So I, I love it. Yep. So that might be the case. And um, I mean, the way that you construct the stories, I think uh, a lot of that. I don't know that, that engineering sort of permeates. At least for me, right. um, I'm a huge fan of the Swamp Thing. I love the stuff that you've been doing. And one of the things that uh, I had a question about specifically was, yeah. what was the was there a challenge conceptually introducing a new parliament because of sort of the the fundamental understanding of what that is? You're sort of trying to uh, give a a personality or actualize an idea. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I almost came at it the from the from the other direction in that I had seen you know things like parliaments proliferate before, where you create parliaments almost like there's some sort of systemic, and I like to call it this way, no offense to Power Rangers fans, but I call it the Power Rangerization of something where you've okay. now got like pink and blue and red and green. Yeah. Um, you know, you see it with the lantern rings as well. Sure, yeah. And, and I felt like all that was doing was creating more things of the same kind. Mm. And then you try to infuse them with different ideas. And, but with this story, what I wanted to do was talk about the battle of ideas first and then go well if one idea has a parliament yeah. why shouldn't others okay. and what kind of conflict does that bring up so really uh, if you if you if you truly think about it over the past decade you know, human industry has had more of an impact on the planet right. than any of the other parliaments right. that you put together so it's essentially industry going well why don't we get a say in how things go and I, I feel like that that gives the story more direction and conflict and weight Rather than me going, I'm going to construct five parliaments, and then sure. we'll figure out what happens. Right, right. Yeah. And, and I think I think to that point, um, the way that you were able to also industry, but the economics of it, and like like the, sort of the negative aspects, and that's how uh, Mike Perkins was able to sort of represent it visually. Was is, yeah. it, it was dingy, it was dirty, it was uh, sure. you know, oil ridden, and I think that translated as a metaphor really, really well. Which yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and and I mean, I also want to clarify, I never want or. The intention was not to portray industry as an inherent negative. Sure. It was industry under the influence of the Pale Wanderer. Right. And if you think about the ending, the ending really is like you don't have to be a product of whoever made you. Yeah. You can choose to be better. Okay. It, and, and essentially, that's how the, the sort of bigger conflict is solved. Spoilers. Um, Get her here. But yeah. But, but, but that was that was the endeavor. So I feel like with with the industrial stuff, the, the Trinity stuff that was happening on the side was always felt more ethereal, more innocent. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the industry stuff that was happening with the Wanderer felt more gritty, more hard, if you will. Yeah. Okay. So I'm getting the uh, I'm getting the light, but I need to ask you because uh, I'm a huge music fan. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of the work that you do involves music, and uh, Again, being that mechanical sort of writer, and uh, how do you how do you think about music, considering that it's so time based, it's so beat focused, and yeah. how how do you how do you think about writing music into a book, knowing that 
we as readers are the ones controlling the time. Uh, as readers? As readers, we're controlling the time of the, like the pacing and, and sort of that rhythm. Well, I think, I, I think, I think that's giving the readers too much power. <laughs> um, no, I think that's what comics are, right? They're this kind of constant battle between the writer trying to control their narrative mm. and the reader trying to control the pace at which it is read. Um, and as a writer, there are things you can do to insinuate to the reader how you want them to read the narrative. Sure, okay. Uh, if you look at something like Blue and Green, you know, we start off with a vertical six panel grid, then goes to an eight panel grid, then we break the grid, mm -hmm. then it goes all over the place. Sometimes the panels fall with musical notations, there's yeah. an insinuation of rhythm when you look at the page. And I think that's really the beauty of the medium. So I wouldn't say readers control it. I think you give readers some okay. measure of control, yeah, but you yeah, can yeah. direct and insinuate how you want them to use it. Ram, insightful as always. Really yes. appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, this pleasure. is probably our final interview of, uh, of the day, so thank you for everybody tuning in. Uh, we had a great time. Ram, I hope you had a great time at the con. I did, I did. Appreciate the time I'm as all always. I'm tired out having a great time, so yeah. Awesome. Uh, continue, guys, uh, to stay tuned for more interviews. I don't know where this is going to line up in the list of what we have, but uh, check out the podcast as always. Check out Ram's books, all of his works that I listed off at the top. Always a great writer. We're always picking up a number one at the very least. Uh, if we're not reading one Ram book a month, there's something wrong on our end, you know? Uh, tune in uh, to the You heard it spells. here. Count them. Hold them to it. <laughs> as long as you keep publishing them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tune in on all our stuff uh, at the Comics Pals, YouTube, Instagram, uh, at the Comics Pals at Gmail, wherever you want to hit us up, please do uh, and enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>